Hello everyone, welcome to Principles of Accounting. In our video today we're going to be looking at how to account for a note payable. A uh, note payable is a form of borrowing money. Uh, we can get a note payable when we borrow money from a bank. We could have a note payable when we have an account payable set up with a vendor and maybe we can't pay on time so they'll roll it into a note payable. Uh, and note payable, some of the characteristics of it, they usually bear interest. In this case, we're looking at an interest-bearing note payable. And a lot of times, they're short-term borrowing. So uh, we'll just get right into it here. We are looking at the Mira Company. On November 7th, Mira Company is going to borrow 160 grand from a bank, uh, and they're going to do it in the form of a note payable. So the note is going to carry the terms of 90 days, and they're going to be paying 8% interest on that money that they're borrowing. So we're going to talk about how we're going to account for the interest involved and also the payment of that note. Right off the bat here, let's go ahead and journalize the issuance of that note and the collection of that cash by Mira. Uh, if we're getting a note payable from a bank, essentially we're getting cash. And it says in our problem we're collecting 160 grand from that note payable. Uh, in turn, we're going to have to pay that back down the road, so we'll set up a note payable. So the entry is pretty simple. Um, we're just going to record cash in the amount of 160000 which is the face amount of the note. And then our note payable, we're going to hit that for $160,000 credit, reflecting the fact that we now have a liability to the bank. In step two, we're going to calculate the accrued interest payable as of the year end. Uh, we took that money out on November 7th. We kind of start that clock ticking on the interest that we owe between November 7 and the year end at 1231. So to figure up the exact amount that we would owe and that we're going to be kind of responsible for that time period, we need to calculate how many days we were borrowing that money. It's a fairly simple calculation. We just kind of figure out how many days we were borrowing the money. So if we took it out on November 7th, we were borrowing that money for 23 days in November. And so where did you get 23 at? Well, November 7 to the end of November, 23 days. And of course in December, we have 31 days from December 1 to December 31. So in all, we were borrowing that money for a period of 54 days from the time we signed the note to the end of the period. So we need to reflect 54 days of interest on our end of the year statement at 1231. So we need to break out our old friend, the uh, interest formulas. Interest equals principal times rate times time. And we'll just kind of start plugging in some numbers here. We borrowed 160 grand. It was an 8% note. Now the time part, we always assume a 360 day year. We borrowed that money for 54 days out of 360. So I'm just going to say 54 divided by 360. Essentially, we were borrowing that money for about 15% of the year. So I'm going to multiply all these numbers together. 160 grand times 8% times my 15%. And I get 1,920. That is the amount of interest that I would be responsible for between November 7 and December 31. So let's go ahead and make an entry for that. At the end of the year, as an adjusting entry, I would make an entry to interest expense for 1920 and you guessed it, the offset is going to be to interest payable. I've incurred $1,920 of interest expense, but I'm not going to pay it until it's actually due in February. So I set up that payable at the end of the year. Speaking of February and paying off the note, let's go ahead and jump to that. Uh, to record the payment of the note at maturity, the first thing we've got to figure out is when is the note going to be due and when are we going to be responsible for paying it all back. Uh, again, we'll kind of break, uh, break out to that little date deal I showed you a second ago. And we'll count how many days that we uh, borrowed the money to try to come up with our date. So we started on November 7. That means we had 23 days in November. December, we would have had 31 days. In January, we would have had 31 days. It's a 90-day note. So from those three kind of months right there, we're talking 85 days. So I have to go five days into February. And that would take me to February 5th. So the note is going to be due on February 5th. 
as far as how we account for the payment of it, well, we know a couple of accounts right off the top of our head that we'll be hitting. We know we had a note payable balance of 160 grand, so if we're paying off the note, that has to go away. We know we had an interest payable of 1920 That's going to go away. So there one, there's one more little element that we have to consider before we can figure out the total amount that we're going to be paying off, and that's how much interest expense we're going to have incurred between January 1 and February 5. So earlier we said 54 days were accrued at the end of the year, so 90 minus 54 would be 36. So we're going to be responsible for 36 days of interest as an expense in the current year. I'm going to go to my handy formula. Interest equals principal times rate times time. Principal is 160000 We're going to multiply that by 8%. And our time, we said, was going to be 36 divided by 360 days. So our interest is going to be 160,000 times 8% times 10%. And I come up with $1,280. That is going to be the amount of interest expense that we're going to have to recognize from the period between January 1 to February 5th when we pay off the note. Now we get to the end, our cash amount is going to simply be the amount that we owed on the note, the amount that was interest payable, and the amount of interest from the current year. So I'm going to add all those together. And I come up with 163200 When we pay the note off on February 5th, that's the amount we're going to have to pay. So we kind of put that in there last as a plug. So to summarize, our journal entry is going to look a little bit like this. We're going to have a cash debit of 160000 and a note payable credit to recognize the borrowing of that money on the note payable. As of the end of the year on 1231, we're going to book 1920 to interest expense and interest payable to reflect the fact that we borrowed money on the 7th and we started incurring interest from the 7th to the end of the year on 1231. And then on February 5th, we're going to go ahead and pay off that note at its maturity date and that's going to require us to book a debit to interest expense, get rid of that interest payable, get rid of the note payable, and then credit cash.